I love my Canton archives. Yeah. Did you get ready to run? Well, I mean, their uh, child rescue. Where? Where's it at? Oh, that's beautiful. Mike's getting it on film. The uh, two the old, old star flight, new star flight. Oh, it's fantastic. So it actually, it's probably, uh, you know, Alex made a joke about Alex Jones. About the federal activities. Okie dokie, you're setting me up on something. No, we're not. We promise. <laughs> what are you going to fix to do? Ask you some simple. You're making me laugh, Arlo. Every time this happens, you make me laugh. You're the one setting us up. got a good Monica Lewinsky joke if you want to hear it. We well, want to hear it. We're here with Lieutenant Beck, commander of the Travis County SWAT team, and his office is on the fourth floor of the Travis County Command Center. Sir? Okay, where you, I'll start with you. Go ahead. County SWAT Team Commander, Lieutenant Beck, fourth floor of the Travis County Sheriff's Department. How you doing today, sir? Just fine. How are y'all? We appreciate you uh, stopping and talking with us. When we walked in, we had the camera off. One of your men was telling us about training with the Delta Force, but she wouldn't let us turn the camera on. They were bullshitting you. Uh -huh. They were bullshitting you. They are? Well, you told us in the past that Delta, that you were in contact with Delta. That's right. They've been contacting you? No. That was a one-time deal. Just around the time we were talking about it, they just happened to call you and give you the... No, 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 no. That they had contacted me. I think I explained it to you once. They had contacted me about training up here. And then after the uh, San Antonio incident, they never did. The well, San Antonio incident? Yeah. You mean when they endangered public safety? I don't believe that they... I don't think they did anything in San Antonio. The police chief said they tried to bribe him down there. Allie Phillips? Did they try anything like that with you? No. Now, basically, I do appreciate you taking this time with us on such short notice. Uh, you are a uh, great uh, member of the community, and we do appreciate your service, Lieutenant Beck. But we've been told that the FEMA preparedness forces are here. Federal Emergency Management Agency are now in Austin. We just saw a news report this week about it, but we've been able to find out exactly what type of training and where they're doing their training. I'm not aware of that. Seriously. I mean, Are you? I, I, I think what, what <coughs> if I am correct on this, they were going, I think the purpose was to familiarize and train emergency response crews on uh, like chemical and biological hazards. That's, that's this That's this I, month. We're told that in January they're going to have a full-scale simulation. Have you heard anything about the full-scale simulation? I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. The ones to talk to would be the uh, probably your firefighters and emergency uh, medical service. So the military training mm -hmm. has been called off here in Austin. For who? For well, Delta? you had told me months ago when we first raised this issue that they had contacted you. I, I, one, one of their front guys came to me and um, told me their plans. Mostly, it was not it was not to train us. It was not to train any people in this area. There was a. Uh, a site that they wanted to train at and it was to notify us that they would be here and uh, was that site the new drainage ditches complexes they put in in East Austin no the area is east but it is not in East Austin um, I'm not even sure if it's within the city limits is it the church <clears throat> no it was an area east of town uh, it's real isolated um, had uh, had they not notified me of them coming there, no one would have even known. They could have come and gone and no one would have known. We're told they've already come and gone from our sources in the fire department and police department. They, they never to... came here. They never came here. Why our sources in the police department that cannot reveal themselves, some of them are very high level, have told us that they've actually been already training in East Austin. No. Why would they train in East Austin? Well, What's it's funny. What? I just brought up East Austin. You said yes, East Austin. It was it was east of Austin. I'm not even sure this area was in the uh, 
city limits. But you did. It's it's a. I'll put it this. Way. I, I I know where they were going to train at. I'm not. I'm not going to say where. I'll just say it was a large tract of land that had some buildings on it uh, where they were going to train at. No one would have even noticed that they would have been there. But don't they have large military bases and mock towns to do that? Not necessarily. They have mount sites that they use. Have you seen the television show when we play the chief of police interview in San Antonio? Yeah, I've seen that. Where they talk about the dishonesty, the attempted bribery, the endangerment of public safety, the firing into the all-night restaurant in Miami? I've, I've, I saw that. That, I wasn't there. I can't answer that. I did. It's only reasonable to assume they're, they're, it's like our SWAT team. We have different training sites, and after you train at one for so long, doing entries, you lose the value of the training because you go into an abandoned house that we might use. Once you know the layout, the, uh, your learning goes down because you know where everything's at. You have to, ideally, you need a different place every time. Are you, do you remember the conversation, Lieutenant Beck, do you remember the conversation we had about nine months ago about uh, federal forces wanting to train with local law enforcement and also in some cases actually uh, engage in law enforcement with them and you said that would never happen. Are you familiar with what's going on in the hill country now with the MPs riding around with the DPS? No, I'm not familiar with that. It's, from my perspective, it's not the military that wants to train with law enforcement. There are some law enforcement that train with the military. This is, this, it's kind of a misnomer. This is, all goes back through the, uh, it, what it, the center of it is counter narcotics. And the reason the military provides the training it all has to do with counter narcotics. They're not going to train you to go over and uh, assault towns or stuff like that. Everything has to be related to narcotic enforcement. The military will provide the training, and it is not really the type of training that uh, w what you think it is. It's not. It's not military per se. It all has to do with uh, narcotic enforcement, and it's geared towards smaller departments that can't afford training. And we're in our department. We've taken advantage of it too. You have to understand the reason that we're always so skeptical about this, due to the San Antonio Express news articles about the helicopters coming in, the automatic weapons fire with live ammunition in the streets, uh, a police chief saying that they attempted to bribe him, endanger public safety. No was never no. They were dishonest with him. That's the point. What what Delta tells you. And what the feds tell you, Lieutenant Beck, from our experience, other departments' experiences, from newspaper accounts, they are dishonest and cannot be trusted. Now, it's funny, that wasn't my term. You said you got a visit from Delta Force's front person? It, it was, I say it's a front man. He was one of the, more properly, it's one of their advanced guys. And he came here to give me notification that they would be training at a particular area and it, it was to give us advance notice so that we would not have people calling in saying that there's a bunch of people running around with guns and stuff and having law enforcement agencies responding out there. Did they train? No. Why did no. they not train? I suppose the San Antonio had a lot to do with it. But they did not come here. Uh, and, I, and as far as training here now, no. Uh, Our sources deep inside Fort Hood have notified us <clears throat> that at this time they are planning to train here in January. For, I, 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 don't, I don't know why they would. Well, you have to realize, Lieutenant Beck, I've been five steps ahead of this. Right. I tell you what's going to be happening in the future. I assure you they plan to train here. And they've been lying to you if they told you otherwise. There's, uh, there's no reason for them to lie. When they train... What's the secret of it? Well, Congressman Lloyd Doggett, in an open letter to the Austin American Statesman uh, several weeks ago, said that there will be a full-scale anti-terrorism simulation sometime in January and that the advance teams would be here in December. FEMA? That's not Delta. Well, Delta I... and, and Marine Force Recon and others, according to the Houston Chronicle and others, are attached to FEMA when they do these full-scale 
I, I don't know that. I would be surprised if, if there are any military at all attached to FEMA, <clears throat> they're not going to be, I would not suspect that they're special operations people. They're more likely the NBC, the, the guys who are trained in uh, nuclear, nuclear, chemical, uh, biological. Yeah, that sort of, sort of things. And I do know from what I've heard here, it is it all it is. It's it's reaction. The the training that they are proposing, it's all reactionary. Mostly, it's of a medical nature for victims. How do you if if something does happen? If there's a a, a derailment or a uh, a truck overturns, or you could have a terrorist or or someone who came up with some biological weapon. How are the locals going to respond to it? Did you see our program that happened September 3rd and 4th? We actually scooped CNN News by two weeks. We were airing it a week after the incident, uh, about a week after September 3rd and 4th. Marine Force Recon, 75 officers to go back and train others, did mock gun confiscations in Hebron, Maryland. And while they were doing it during the daytime, it was medical reasons. They were doing mock injuries, mock mock chemical attacks, and then at night it took in their true role, which was gun confiscation, and the camera people were told to turn their cameras off in their own state. I'm not familiar with that. I don't, what do you mean by gun confiscation? They were doing mock gun confiscation door to door oh. with citizens that had agreed to go along with it. Uh, I find that hard to believe. Well, you've seen the other programs. You might have mm -hmm. missed this one. Perhaps I'll shoot you off a VHS copy, a half-inch yeah. copy, and bring it to you, Lieutenant. That's fine. I'm I assure you, I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. Well, you know, this is my day-to-day -day business, is SWAT. And I pretty much know what's going on, you know, in our mission. And it, I assure you, it is strictly law enforcement. Um, we don't have any military ambitions or... Uh, we don't Mission operate, purview. We don't operate along those lines. What about the armored personnel carriers? I know Austin has them, a DPS has them. Are y'all attempting to purchase some? Purchase? No. Acquire? Yes. Free ones from the military. If if it's possible, and that's uh, specifically, uh, it, it we need one. Were you? Were any of your men, or were you out? Last Friday after the uh, UT Texas A&M football game, when they had the Travis County helicopters going down the streets and the armored personnel carrier out there, and after the football game, you're not. We we worked the football game. I mean, after the football game on Guadalupe Street. No, that was uh, DPS, I believe. Wasn't it DPS and UT police? Well, I could kick myself for missing it. I've now talked to around 30 eyewitnesses that they had police literally shutting down the road, marching down in riot gear with an armored personnel carrier rolling from behind and the new Travis County Sabre 1 and Sabre 2 police helicopters. We don't, we don't have any police helicopters. We don't have any police helicopters. Uh, Starflight has a new helicopter. Uh, it's configured for medical uh, missions. There, we, there are no law enforcement helicopters. DPS has one. Or two here, Lieutenant Beck. I think you were kind of smiling there. For well, a I am smiling about it, and 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 the reason I am is you know why. I mean, we the sheriff's department, uh, we explored the idea of getting a helicopter for law enforcement, and you were you were quite vocal over there. I think the, mostly the budget is what shut us down. But there is a need for a helicopter exclusively for law enforcement. I would, I would, I would actually agree with that. Yeah. I would actually agree that when we read the purchase orders, it, sh it said Sheriff's Department Command Complex uh, as part of the decentralization plan, which I'm, sure, that, yeah, yeah. which I'm sure you're familiar with. The problem is, is we now have the head of EMS, what's his name? I don't know. A chubby fella. Um, we, we actually have that on tape. The head of EMS telling us that y'all the sheriff's department use your own crews, and then it's Saber One and Saber Two. No, that's that's no no no. We do, we don't have any flight crews here. As a matter of fact, 
had had this had we been able to acquire a helicopter we were going to train some officers to be pilots and I was asked to be one of them and the only reason I've got commercial multi instrument seaplane I've got I've got a gobs of fixed wing experience and I also have years as a crew chief on a helicopter in, in Vietnam uh, no I was in the Marines from 69 to 72 and then in the National Guard and the reason I would, it would take me about 30 hour transition course to go over from fixed wing to rotary wing we don't have any crews though the the, uh, the Sabre 1 and Sabre 2 or radio calls when Starflight is on a law enforcement mission that's the radio calls that they'll go by. Are you aware that a, that a national magazine has picked up that story, The Free American? And uh, it actually, we have the tower records from Simeon Tungle at Austin Aviation Department. We also have Karen Sunlightner at finally admitting it in the court that my mother got a four-hour surveillance mission over her house and then I, I see. I, you you had talked to me about that. First off, I don't think they said it was APD piggybacking. APD piggybacking. What do you mean? That's Karen Sunliner. She said it was an a. She said it was a Austin Police Department piggyback surveillance mission. Um, now it that just off of what I'm guessing, it it may have been the uh, the Starflight helicopter. APD may have requested. To use it for some reason for uh, I don't know. It's a murder investigation of Maybe. my of my parents, and it was a murder investigation across town at my house. A murder house. investigation of your parents. That is what. Well, it was over their property for an hour straight, taking photos of my mother at above uh, not even 150 feet. And then Mike got if a visit. I can see them using a helicopter. To uh, to take pictures of a, of an area. Now we've done that before. We've had homicides, or uh, uh, especially homicides, where we want to get an overall picture of the area. They'll use the helicopter. That's the only thing we have. And they have done that before. They'll videotape it, take some stills. That that becomes evidence. It's it's, it's a helpful investigative tool for the detectives. It's also good if you if when you go to court, when you have a jury, you can say the body was found right here, here's the road, you know, the murder weapon was here. Now they do use that for the for the Well there was a murder a year and a half ago about half a mile from where my parents lived. Yeah. And we would have bought that story of what happened October ninth. But then October tenth, in the early hours, actually October eleventh by then Mike calls me at 2 in the morning and says, we have a helicopter flying over, turning on its light only when it gets here. He got the actual video by the time he got his camera out and got it, got two more passes where it uh, flies over, turns its light on. That's a that. separate part of Austin, 15 miles away. Then my girlfriend calls without even knowing about this, crying that a helicopter was shining a light into her windows at her place in central Austin. There's only two Starflight helicopters. We are very, uh, when we use them, we're very picky when we use them because it costs money. I, I'm just off the top of my head, is we probably play, uh, pay operating costs maybe $300 an hour for the helicopters. You know, it's fuel, maintenance, crew, and all that. So you just don't call up and say, hey, let's go take some pictures. It better be something good, and it better be worth the money. But just joyriding around, no. The law enforcement, we, we don't do that. A uh, helicopter with four hours of fuel, that's something I'm unfamiliar with. Well, it was logged in at the tower okay. with a four-hour surveillance yeah. mission. The, the primary purpose of those two helicopters is star flight for medical. Matter of fact, if, if right now, if I needed a helicopter for a law enforcement reason and they were on a medical run or something, the medical takes priority. And that's why the Sheriff's Department wanted a helicopter exclusively for law enforcement. And that has happened in the past where we want to use a helicopter for a search or something, or up at the lake, uh, if we have a boat overturned or missing kids or something, or if something comes up where we have an escapee, we can't get the helicopter because they're either on a medical run. Okay, go ahead. Not the, not the type, don't get this I'm on not, here. I'm getting it back as here. 
Ready? <laughs> no, not the type of what we want. Why don't you turn? Lieutenant Beck, S Commander of the Waffen SS here in uh, Central Texas. Ah, y'all And I know that'll be on TV. <laughs> 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 Can we get a shot of your patch? The uh, kind of turned. You've up. already got a shot of the patch. So y'all are the strike cobras. Actually, this patch was stolen from the Tulsa, Oklahoma PD. And if any of them were watching and they see it, they're going to say, "Whoa!" But uh, no, that's a swap. It's a similar swap patch Tulsa PD has. So that's your strike cobra. It's not a strike cobra. There's always the mongoose. Uh, there's always the mongoose. Always the mongoose. Y'all gonna crush them? None of it. None, these patches, like I've told you in the past, we we're these uniforms. We we would like to change things out. Get gray. Get a, go to gray. It's anything. Well, that's the funny thing in the uh, penal code. It says that for officers to give tickets or to uh, arrest people, they have to be in proper uniform, and that's a dark gray or dark blue. With a cap no, that matches. It doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. We got it. Huh? The, we got it in the car. Well, that's uh, uniforms come in all colors. I'm talking about for SWAT, the black. Get away from the black. You don't like black? Not particularly. It's hot in the summer. Um, at nighttime, this sticks out almost like a white. Who wanted you in black? This this goes back years and years ago when the first SWAT teams were in black. None of us like it. All of us want to change to a different color, but I mean, you got uh, finances. It always comes back to Plus money. Plus the fence. Get... Yes, back. You got people making sure we were all right. With no, it. It, I'm just nah, teasing just... <laughs> Um, a few other questions. What do you think about uh, Brady Two and the computers not working the first few days and people not being able to purchase firearms? Uh, personally, it pisses me off the whole... I, I have not used it yet, but I think the whole thing's a crock. But won't we be safer when only criminals can have guns? I... You know the answer to that. You're, you're not gonna... You're gonna find the staunchest supporters of citizens their right to bear arms is going to be at the cops well I've I've seen that and I've read that in a lot of the law enforcement magazines the problem is is the people that give you your orders are trying to make it completely illegal who gives us our orders well the federal money that comes into these areas the people that get elected by the moron citizenry that's who you take your orders from is it not? I should say no, but perhaps in a roundabout way. But uh, no, you're not. We don't get orders like that, and we and we never are. And I don't know about Brady too. Now, like the whole Brady bill is a bunch of crap. But now you've got actually the Delta Force numbers in there inside your little Rolodex, don't you? I have a business card. Can we see the business card? You've seen it before, Alex. Can we see it one more time? We'll cover up the name. Why? Cover up the name. I, I. Uh, we just want to get a close up of the symbol. I don't think there's a symbol on it, is there? Yes, there's a symbol. There's a symbol. Don't get the numbers on it, though. That camera can't get close enough. Yeah. Oh, let us get a shot of the symbol. It's just a typical. It's a. Uh, as far as I know, it's just what is that Department of Army symbol on it? Yep. There's nothing special about Delta Force. It's, just, it's a military outfit. It's, they're in the Army. It's just the most elite military team out there. That's, a, that's an opinion. Maybe yeah. the Israelis are more... Well, you go to... I'm sure in Israel, an Israeli would tell you that. If you ask a Navy SEAL, he's going to tell you well, that. Well, I think the Israelis get more practice than the real deal. So. You know, if you ask a Marine Force Recon, he's going to tell you he's the most elite. I get a close-up of this. I want a close-up of the symbol. Well, there's a Delta Force car. Come on, Alex. It's that camera. Don't somewhere. burn us out. It's like a ten old. It's a ten year old camera. I won't even get close ups. Oh, well, yes, I can. I can fix. Department of Defense should say United okay. Socialist of America. There you go. <sighs> Did you get it? 
as close as you're going to get. Ah, uh, we have it. Oh, geez. I have, uh, let's see, what else do you want? Uh, it'll lieutenant it back nice. Yeah. yeah. You don't have any other numbers in there? Personal stuff. What about Marine Force Recon? I was in the Marines. I know. What is, um, these guys got better things to do than come to Austin and mess around. They tried to come to Austin. Delta Force did. Yes, but I want to ask you why, if they're not so dangerous, why did a police chief, former military, Ali Phillips, in San Antonio say they tried to bribe him and throw I don't. I don't know what happened down there. I mean, Delta Force, it's counter-terrorist, it's... And it can very easily. The United States is the most open country in the world for terrorists, and we have not yet begun to see terrorist acts. And the only thing they're doing is training. Are you familiar with Oklahoma City? Somewhat. I mean, you've got to know, being in the Marines and being a pilot and everything else, that that building was blown out, not in. There was no crater. I, I don't know. I didn't see that. I, I, what about the seismographs? I don't know anything. What about the BATF and the FBI being off the ninth floor? There were ATF agents killed in that. No. That's, huh? I've got the Senate hearings. Or actually, what? It was my understanding that there were some uh, some ATF agents killed in that. I know there was some federal uh, law enforcement officers that, that uh, perished in that. Well, it was, it was a federal office building. Yeah. So basically, again, we're talking to Lieutenant Beck, commander of the Travis County uh, Strike Force team, and no, again, we're t the strike, the the yeah, the Strike Force team, yeah. Again, we're again we're here talking with Lieutenant Beck, commander of the Travis County SWAT team. You do not know where the NBC teams are training this week in no. Austin, no. and you you haven't heard that they're here in Austin. No. And I, now, I, mostly from what I read on that, FEMA's come from the newspaper. And uh, like I told you, I don't think law enforcement is that big a role player in it. I think mostly it's for the uh, the firefighters and uh, medical personnel. Just and to get used to working with FEMA and being friends. And Are you familiar with the Senate hearings about FEMA no. and the concentration camps? No. Are you familiar that the Manazar prison camp has been reopened, the camp in the high desert of California that held 110,000 Japanese? New fences are being put up and... Uh, Was it someone's private resort now or...? No. It no, says I'm De Department of, of Justice that. Federal Prison Camp. I'm not aware of that. My immediate concerns are Travis County and uh, I don't. we don't get involved with with things. Is that military time on your watch? Yes, it is. That's military time. You're headed up to New Orleans today, aren't you? Yeah. Well, we'll let you get out of here. Lieutenant yeah. Beck, I appreciate the time. What are you going to do if Delta Force uh, tries to come back into Austin? Try to get some training out of them or get some, uh, you know, whatever equipment they have that's not nailed down and they're not looking. I guess we'll take it. Do you think exposing corruption had anything to do with the fact that Delta Force decided not to attempt to train here? No. I, I don't know why. They I, said I they were going to train, correct? I do know it, it is, and I from, their, from that point of view, I can see their point of view. I would like, we train once a week, and if, if I could do it, I would change the training site every week. It's, it's counterproductive to go to the same place every time and train. It just, it becomes, there's no, it serves no purpose. And if I could move my people every week to a different training site, With I would With a new do, restaurant to fire bullets into. That, that, I don't, when they mean by live ammo. Uh, ceramic. The ceramic type. But you saw the article on my television show. They yeah, fired into I, an all-out restaurant. I'm sure it was not intentional. What about the crashing the helicopter in Sugarland, Texas last year. I'm not which I'm not aware of that. That was Delta. You also saw the article if you saw the show about them doing a hundred thousand dollars damage to a warehouse in New Orleans. That's easy to do. 
now the the price figure I don't know we we have gone to training sites where I have had to tell the people you know watch what you're doing don't kick this don't overturn that it's real easy to do it during tactical operations when you're going in you might want to hit a door or something like that and I can see where yes you could do some damage and uh, that's something that uh, that we face all the time too well do you share the chief of police in San Antonio's view that you don't want to endanger public safety by having these military teams ransacking areas? <laughs> no, I, I don't. They're not going to endanger public safety. That's the American military we're talking about. They are not going to endanger. But are they the American military? Did you read the paper Tuesday about the German troops being... Hey, the Germans have been here for years. Since 1991? Prior to that. But why now is there such a big furor? Because what the, what they're doing, they're doing some low-level flying in their tornado, with well, the tornadoes, the jets. They're doing some low-level flying in West Texas, and it has some of the sheep and cattle farm, farmers out there upset. That's been going on for years. The German Air Force has been here for years and years. I think they're out of Luke in Tucson. Matter of fact... They're also out of Holloman. Holloman? They actually leased, they, I, I don't know, but... They actually I, leased the base. Okay. They have been here for years. Do they have diplomatic immunity? I don't think so. They're I don't claiming know. it. I don't know. They're claiming Oh, they're it. claiming that... Uh, diplomatic that, immunity means you can run somebody over. No, that was, that was brought up. The uh, I am somewhat familiar with the, the tornado jet that they're flying is a low level uh, attack bomber. Attack, attack deal, and I can see why they would be training here in the southwest. There's nothing in Europe like that where they can be training, and you can imagine that they're training for Middle East where it's uh, flat. Yeah, but that's been going on. I mean, even back into the the '60s, they they have trained here. What about the Russians out of Fort Hood? I don't think there are any Russians at Fort Hood. Have you been with the Russians? Have I been with the Russians? No, no. Have you been? So you haven't been in contact with the Russians out of Fort Hood? No. We were our this unit. We trained at Fort Hood uh, about two months ago at one of the Mount sites. Uh, Mount sites. Mount M O U T. It's uh, it's it's the complex where they have the buildings and stuff. But you didn't. No, it was our own team training. It, you know, you can go to these army bases. Uh, I've been to like Fort McClellan over in Alabama, and that you'll see soldiers from different countries there. You know, you'll see English and German and British. I mean, uh, and Russian. If there are Russian soldiers there, uh, I would imagine that they're armor, probably tank, and that there's probably, I wouldn't say there's that many, and there are probably officers over here for some exchange program or something like that. You know, my own son, has, when he was in the Coast Guard uh, here two years ago in Alaska, uh, the Russians sent over a, uh, a cutter-type ship, and they trained together on, on uh, sea rescues. Do you think it was a good thing that President Clinton transferred the nuclear weapons, guidance, propulsion, separation, and multiple warhead delivery system to the Chinese military? No, obviously that's not a good idea, but I, I don't know what I don't know if that occurred. You haven't heard and about that I, in the press? Yeah, I think I've read something about it. it Do, how does it feel to know our military servant under President Clinton? I'm not a Clinton fan. Like I said, like I told you before, Clinton's not going to be here very long. He's not getting so, impeached. Did you hear about Henry Hyde, Judiciary Committee Chairman, refusing to investigate him? Refusing to investigate him on campaign finance? No. And that has the China connection under Clinton. Him. Clinton is not the last. They say he's the commander-in-chief, and he, he may be. But there's a lot of... Uh, he is not the uh, the final say. I mean, he has advisors, and, and there's, there's... Like Sandy Berger and Secretary of Defense William Cohen, who's created the new 50 teams and the other 10 teams with, yeah. with the FEMA. So you're saying 
Clinton's held back by Madeleine Albright, and who I, wasn't I, born I, here. I would hope so. You know, she was born in Czechoslovakia. I have no problems her, with that. Her father was a communist diplomat. I have no problems with that. Why are there all these communists? And did, do you remember John Kelly? John, do you remember John Shelley Kashvili, Chairman Joint Chiefs of Staff? He uh, was, yeah. He was born. He was from Poland, wasn't he? Yeah, his, he was from Poland. His father. Do you remember back in '92, the big Senate hearings when Colin Powell resigned, didn't want to work under Clinton, and mm -hmm. he put Kashvili in. The senators asked him about his father running death camps for the Nazis. Do you remember that? I rem there was some. Uh, I rem not exactly that. I know there was some controversy about it. Well, my point is, this is how serious it is. We need y'all. I mean, this stuff is, I know at times it seems comical, all the wild stuff we talk about, but then later you see it happen, you get the phone calls from these people. What I'm trying to say to you, Lieutenant Beck, is, is y'all are the Achilles heel in this New World Order system, which is real. When you got a president with Cash Veely, who can barely speak English, sitting on his daddy's knee while he was putting Jews in the ovens, you've got Madeleine Albright, Secretary of State, born in Czechoslovakia, the daughter of a communist diplomat, You've got Secretary of Defense William Cohen, a blue blood from the East Coast, totally selling out our nation. You've got Sandy Berger, National Security Advisor, that talks about global regimes of power at CFR meetings on C-SPAN. You've got this whole collection of people. Are you familiar that the Panama Canal has now been handed over to the Chinese military? I wasn't aware of the Chinese. Well, you know that back in 1978 and 79, Carter said by 2000 it'll be given up fully and our troops will be pulled mm -hmm. out by 1996. That was an agreement that we had with the Pan Panamanians. But what you have to realize is, is that that was nothing but jungle and we built that. The French weren't able to. Do you think it's a good security, a good security arrangement to allow the Chinese military to now have four ports on the Panama Canal? I was unaware that they had ports down there. Taking the Panama Canal back could be done in a couple of hours, if if need be. Because it's in our hemisphere of influence. We, if, if, if it played such a strategic role and the United States had to take that thing back in half a day, it would be back under our control. Perhaps today, and perhaps if, when the time comes, we don't have leadership like President Clinton in the White House with his collection of bloodthirsty Europeans at his side. The point is, is that America is being contained. It's being encircled. And I think it's a dangerous trend to allow the Chinese military to have four of the main ports, both the entrance at the east side and the exit at the west side of the Panama Canal. Trust them. Trust them. Trust Clinton? No, I don't trust Clinton. Who do you trust? Very few. Very few people. I trust my wife. That's about it. You and your wife but, back uh, together and everything? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to work things out. I won't put that on TV. Well, Lieutenant Beck, thanks for all the time. Yeah. If Delta Force comes into town and they're ever trying to confiscate firearms, are you going to go up against them? Delta Force is not going to come here and comp... How are you, how are you going to confiscate guns? Well, I, 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 what if they're we, going door to door? How are you? How are you going to do that? What if FEMA, during an emergency Y2K, wants you to go, say, to 50 different houses and pick up dangerous people? As I said before, it will never come to that. If the if the Clinton says take all the guns for the next 25 years, there will be bickering among the different agencies on which one is going to be in charge of it, who's going to do it. It will never happen. It's physically impossible. Lieutenant Beck, will you protect and defend the Constitution from enemies foreign and domestic? I have sworn to that. Uh, that I mean, that's something that, that we have done in the military. That's something that we do as, as law enforcement. But President Clinton gave that oath and he gave the missile seekers well, to the Chinese. Well, that's his problem. You know, not all of us. Clinton may be the president, but he's not our leader. You know? He's not, uh, fortunately, you know, he's made a lot of mistakes, and he's going to pay for them. Do you think he's going to be impeached? No, I, he's, regardless if, if he's impeached or what, he's not going to be the next president. Well, his term's yeah. up. Yeah. But you, you think he is going to be punished? Who cares? Who cares? You're just sick of him. 
I don't I don't I don't dislike him and I don't like him. Who cares? It's it's no you know you can censor this. It's no sweat off my balls what he does, you know? If he wants to go and do whatever, more power to him. Just give the Chinese the Panama Canal, give them our missile no, secrets. No, I'm not that. I'm talking about his own private affairs. We but didn't even bring far, those up. Huh? As far as the, the now the that Panama the Panama Canal that has been in the tree in a I say a treaty. I don't know if it was a treaty, but we knew for years and years it was going back to the Panamanians. That it was going back to them, and I'm sure it. it you know it. Perhaps it helps their economy. I don't know. But I know that even though if there's Chinese down there, we still control it. But what about 20 years from now? Is they're long, industrializing. As long, it, it comes down, whatever country has the most money to throw around is the country that's going to rule it. And that's the point that we're trying to make here. If we had good leadership here, leadership it, won't cut it. They wouldn't have... They would well the, the will to, to activate the troops to defend that canal. We're allowing the Chinese military to come in. What happens twenty years down the road, which is a blink in real politics, wow. when we've got another person like Clinton, perhaps worse. Look what the American people are accepting now. What will they accept in the future? I have no idea. See, I believe traitors have taken this nation over. I believe we've been we've been usurped. Well, we've probably been on the road to downslide ever since the Constitution was signed. We probably started the downslide right then and there, or possibly even when the when the first European settlers came over. I'm sure that you know the the Indians will say, "Well, we started going to shit right then," and there may be some truth in that. You know, we're the United States is a very young country. So, if President Clinton, let's say, allowed foreign troops in and declared a UN emergency, we saw his speech at the UN six months ago about starting bringing in UN forces to try to stop drugs as a new crusade. Oh, I don't think, that, that's, that's, a, <clears throat> that's not... Uh, that's a Clinton fantasy? It's not feasible. Number one, there are enough, if you're going to involve the military in that, we have enough troops. Second of all, you're talking UN, you're talking uh, soldiers from different countries, they don't speak, not all of them speak English. There's a language barriers, there's equipment barriers. So they're going to need y'all's help. Whose help? Ours? Yes. To do, to, yes. Well, they would, they would not, uh, it is highly unlikely that we're going to have Italian soldiers in Del Rio stopping marijuana shipments. Yes. What about if they put in the national grid of biometrics, thumb scanners, or retina scanners, to get a driver's license, as they've already done, and then they connect it all on a national grid on that basis. Wouldn't that bring the jurisdiction they need, the control? How are they going to control? Well, if you, you heard, got, it, yeah, I mean, you got thumb scanned, didn't you? Yes. Oh, they can. Uh, but I refuse it the second time. Have you heard about the listing devices being put up by the feds here in Austin? I heard that from Steve. Was it you or Steve Lane here last week? It was and on that, the news. I that I first heard about it from it was Steve. Have you heard anything else about the listening devices? No, but it's stupid. What purpose? I, I, Steve, I asked Steve about it. Why? And he said there was something they could triangulate gunshots or something like that. That's what you got neighbors and telephones for. So you're saying we don't need these federal listening devices that are being put in no. here in Austin? Not for that purpose. I don't know what purpose other... I don't know. what. That's the purpose that he told me that they could uh, triangulate gunshots or what else, I don't know. The camera's on the, where is this, Mopac or something? That, 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 I understood it was where they could occasionally, well they would have a bank of screens and occasionally they could monitor traffic and see if there was any tie-ups or problems. or. But the new FEMA center, you heard about that? I don't know, I'm not real familiar with FEMA. You well, know, the new FEMA Center, we we passed the money for it in the last bond election yeah. last month. My my only knowledge of FEMA is the federal agency that comes in after 
not natural disasters like the floods that come in and assess damage. And help the, the children. Yeah, help, well, help the children, help the people. That's that's my knowledge of them. As far as them, I, I doubt if they're involved with anything military uh, at all. You doubt if they're involved in anything military? I doubt that. I don't know. Well, Lieutenant Beck, thanks a lot for saying that you'll surely. Thanks for saying that you'll protect and defend the Constitution. I will. Strike, Cor Strike Force Commander Lieutenant Beck. Now to our APC. Okay. Let me tell you something about Clinton, though. He, he's going to wait four years and run again, and his wife's going to run in 2000. Oh, oh no, that's already came out. That came out on Larry King last night. Did you hear uh, Monica went to her plastic surgeon? No. And. Uh, she said, I want to get my love handles removed. Oh, yeah, space. He, he said, uh, why? You won't be able to hear. <laughs> uh, get, get that, get that. Get, huh? You want to sit in on tape? No. Yeah. Hey, tell us the Monica joke. No, I got to I gotta Tell us the Monica joke. Okay, All right, here we go. You going to put this on TV? I'll put it at the roll-in. Okay. Tell us what are you going to do? Put it on the roll-in? No, yeah. listen, say, say this is Lieutenant Beck, and I got a, I, I got a Clinton joke. It's Lieutenant Beck. I got a uh, uh, Lieutenant joke. Lieutenant Beck, Commander Travis County Swanson. All right, I have a sense of humor. Yep. Anyways, Monica went to. I'll her... start over with, the, with this is Lieutenant Beck, Travis County. This is Lieutenant Beck, Travis County Sheriff's Department. We do have a sense of humor. Monica went to her plastic surgeon. She asked the plastic surgeon, "Remove my love handles." The doctor looked and said, "Why? You wouldn't be able to hear." <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Got any more important numbers here we should no, look at? Oh hell no. Any more Delta Force numbers or anything? No. Commander. This is, ah, Saddam Hussein. He's calling me. Calling you. We want your because nobody else does. <laughs> hey, listen. Our van. We're trying to get a van. Ours went tips up. Who are you gonna hit, Commander? Well, I'm gonna hit up the commissioner's court. What is this shit? Oh, that's a bid. Now, is that Delta Force? No, no, this is uh That's a Delta Force communicator? No, that's something else. No, this is a... Uh, Delta Force giving you a call lately? No. No, I don't my stuff. No, our van, we used to have, I don't know if you ever saw, we had a black van that we carried our equipment in. Oh, you've got a brand new Expedition, don't you? No, it's last year. Big shiny black one? Big dirty black one. You gonna put a big skull on the side? No, actually, I think I, in in March I'm getting transferred. Where? Patrol. Uh, I'm gonna be on the uh, way uh, this uh, reorganization. You've been punished. No, it's it's a reorganization. Are you gonna get paid the same? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. are they gonna put maybe a guy in a pink uniform in here? To... Yeah, a uh, tutu. <laughs> pink tutu. Is, is that the sheriff's idea? I don't know. <laughs> now, it's, it, I don't think there's going to be a SWAT lieutenant. There'll be uh, Al will still be here. Basically, they're going to find somebody that does want to go. Do, uh, basically, they're going to find somebody that does want to go door to door and take up their guns. No, no, it's it's a complete reorganization. Here it is, right here. Central Command. That's East. Oh, you're going to be a command over over patrol. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, I'll be on midnights. I have two sergeants and thirteen officers. Two sergeants and 13 officers. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, General. Anyways, listen. Um, Do you want off SWAT? No. If, if, well, to put it this way. If You're a nice guy. That's why they're throwing you off SWAT. Uh, yeah, probably so. Probably so. If, if my job was purely SWAT, I would, I would love to stay here. But there's more to it. I have, uh, you know, narcotics. Uh, the intelligence unit. Oh, the intelligence unit. It's criminal intelligence. <laughs> Mostly we deal with parolees and stuff. There's a lot of bullshit that comes with this. And we also have the warrants. If it was purely SWAT, I'd love it. But with the little extras, uh, you know, they can, they can have it. Really? Yeah. So you're going to give up the black uniform? For the brown. All right. Oh, so you'll no longer be a black shirt, you'll be a brown shirt. A brown shirt. There we go.
You get my brown jack boots and uh, uh -huh. thanks a lot. I don't know if I get a sword or not with it. But you even know, ooh, you want a sword. Actually, yeah, I gotta have a sword. SS sword? Uh, I don't know. It's either that or a pirate. Oh, sword. let me ask you one more question. I know you've been here with, uh, I know you've been here with us for an hour, but last question of about 20. I'm serious. You have to go. I understand. Tell us real fast, Lieutenant Beck, before you head out of town. I know you've been working hard all week. How come y'all are so cowardly that you won't have a shooting contest with me when I'll defeat you up and down the street? No one backed out. Sheriff Frazier determined that it would probably be in the best interest not to do it. Uh, some people would take it in good light and support it and I'm sure there were other people who would take it the wrong way and give us all a hard time about it. We saw some Marines when we first came in. What were they doing here in the building? The Marines? What? Were they in uniform? We didn't have our cameras on. Oh, they're recruiters. recruiters. Oh, they're, uh, the Marines are here recruiting officers? No, 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 no. <laughs> our central records is located on this floor and we, you, up here you'll see the Army recruiters, Air Force, Navy, Marines. They come up, they're doing background checks on uh, recruits to see if they have a rest record. So y'all are getting some relationships. Well, hello, folks, and, relationship. and stay tuned for more classics here on Mike Hansen Archives and our new channel, Waco Archives. And don't forget our oldest channel Mike Hansen archives here on YouTube stay tuned for more but make sure y'all get everybody to subscribe to Hansen archives and the new one Waco archives we're busy every day uploading more and more videos uh, we have hired somebody to do that and bought the equipment to do it uh, it's a lot of work uh, if you would like to help out with that situation uh, send us $25 and I will send you my book and everything that comes in from my book will be used to uh, fund this these three channels so stay tuned right here uh, to YouTube and Facebook. I am Mike Hansen from Gonzales, Texas on Facebook. Thanks a lot. And God I bless. I might get a free calendar out of one of them. Every they just come time. up and visit military. Just come no, up. they don't visit. They don't even, they don't come to SWAT. They go to central records. They're checking to see if, 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 if the applicant has an arrest record. Just tell us they're coming to take over. No, 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 no. These, these young guys now in the service. Nah, they're just up visiting. No, they're, they're, they're working. I mean, they have to, they're doing the background checks on their little recruits that they're taking in. Gotcha. Well, thank you very much, General. All right. This is Desi Mariah Andrews, and I love Hanson Archives and Waco Archives on YouTube. And Mike Hanson Archives. And Mark Hanson Archives. He forgot to tell me that. Oh, uh, and, and I love Desi Andrews. <laughs> What's this, Mike? What's this? Between me and uh, LeBlanc. Is that who's gotten the most arrest personally? No. These guys, they go out and they'll, they oh, make, let me turn the camera. They, they make two or three hundred arrests a year. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're saying. Hold on, hold on okay. We're here talking to Strike Force Commander Lieutenant Beck. No. We're Lucky here talking. Strike. Lucky Strike Force. I'll quit smoking. We're here talking to uh, Lieutenant Beck, Commander Travis County SWAT Team. And right here we have the Team 1, huh? And we have Team 2. And here's the, and you can see I'm running out of time. I, I made three and a half arrests, and he's ahead of me by... This is for Saturday Night Live. Uh, what, two and eight and nines or something? No, we don't, see, these guys, they, they make... Uh, Hundred arrests a month. We don't do that. These are just a little. Oh, let me ask you a question. What do you think of Kirk Watson, the mayor of Austin, giving all the legislators uh, zero parking tickets? I don't get that. Do you get that? No. Why no. did Kirk Watson do that? I don't know. Good question. Can you get me one? I hear that. I need to have a have immunity from parking tickets. <laughs> Come on, well, let's they, go. You, what's he doing? Oh, well, uh, letting all the legislatures? What did I say? I forgot what I said. Uh, what'd you say? That uh, you sure wish you had one too? Or? No. <laughs>
Yes, sir. Um, what do you think of Mayor Kirk Watson coming out and saying that the state legislators in Austin don't get tickets, they're immune from it? I think they ought to all get a ticket. They, all, they ought to all get tickets? No favoritism. But Kirk Watson, what? They're not better than anybody else. No better than anybody else. If they do something wrong, they deserve a ticket. And what'd you say Kirk Watson's doing to him? Favoritism. But you had a different word. Scratching their back. Well, the other one. Oh, there he goes. Well, it's good talking to you, sir. Here, and uh, we'll get right back to your classic video here on Hanson Archives, or if you're watching Mike Hanson Archives on YouTube. Uh, just want to remind you, uh, you'll see the address pop up, our phone number. Uh, I want to invite you to buy my book here. Uh, it's when Alex and I snuck into the Bohemia Grove. Um, the book is called Bohemia Grove, Cult of Conspiracy. Uh, if you send $25 to that address, I'll sign it. And what will happen with the money is something good. We're taking all the hundreds and hundreds of VCR tapes, which we used to use in the old days, and transfer them over to computer and uh, putting them up on the Internet, which is... <laughs> very hard job believe it or not and very expensive job so if you get a chance and uh tex marsh just actually just passed away he's the one that forwarded it, the book uh and he just barely passed away a month or two ago and uh there's alex and i when we were younger uh we both looked pretty good there uh then uh, it's 25 years later now, but uh, go ahead and if you if you can. We also, if you want to call that number, uh, we also got a credit card machine. We can uh, uh, charge it if you need to. I know a lot of people don't like to send a money order or a check or anything like that, but we'll get it right back out to you. $25 for the book, and it will go for a good cause. So... Uh, God bless, and now we're going to get back to your classic video here on YouTube. God bless. Mike Hansen. Oh, you guys are nuts. <laughs> now, you're going to get this here. Me's sitting here scratching. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. I didn't get... We're in uh, Death Command Central, going down with the lieutenant. The slowest elevator in Austin. Notice it's black to cover up the blood stains from many a... From us beating on the doors when we get stuck in it once a week. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Where would y'all park your APC? Downstairs? Yeah. It wouldn't be it would be it wouldn't be used, maybe. So you're saying Delta Force rode right up on this elevator. One guy? But the front man as you call it. So the Delta Force front man rode up this elevator. We're uh yeah, we're putting a I think we're gonna put a plaque up here that uh <laughs> you give them guys. Don't let the uh, the special ops. You could deal. You could you could deal with special ops, couldn't you? Yeah. We're gonna need your help when they come into town. Oh yeah. You gonna join up with the forces to smash them? The uh, highest paid, I guess, will take me. The highest paid, huh? Or right now. Are you still coming? <laughs> Look who we got here. Somebody that we haven't seen in about 20 years is Hello the there. late How and great, you? late and great. Good to see you. George Humphrey. Yes. Tell oh my <laughs> goodness. I see who it is. Yes. <laughs> Tell us what you've been up to. Oh my good goodness. Isn't this a great day? Yes. It's amazing. Tell us why you're here, hurry, because it's my Facebook. My heart is heavy for the world, but my heart is also happy for the good people here. We need to get back to work, and we need to realize that the cure, this cure, it's not a cure, it's not about a virus, it's about political control. And we are free and sovereign, and we have the choice to, to be either be slaves or to be free. I choose to be free, yes. Well, guess what I did? I bought about $20,000 worth of 
editing equipment and hired some people to put all the tapes on for the last 25 years and you're on there so i want you to and, and i got i'm gonna plug my youtube channel okay great, great mike great. hansen of course archives of course hansen archives and waco I, archives. I didn't recognize you at the start okay so i need you to say this is george humphrey and i love mike hansen archives this is george humphrey and this guy is awesome. Mike Hansen, the Mike Hansen Archives. Check it out. You're on there. We just put about three tapes of you on there. And you had slick black hair there. <laughs> now, right. it's, now it's all dyed. All right. God bless y'all. We'll see okay. you in a minute. You're on. Hey, everybody. This is Kevin Smith, and I love Mike Hansen Archives. Check it out. And Hanson Archives. And Hanson Archives? Yeah, I got three YouTube channels. Give them all to me. I'll do it. I'll grab and fire them. God bless you. Thanks, Mike.